Jim Marquis, a highly successful serial entrepreneur, executive leader, consultant, speaker, inventor, author, and social change philanthropist. Hugh and his beautiful wife, Jane, have built, transformed and sold companies in many industries including hospitality, human resources, telecommunications, forestry and information technology. They founded Stop Start, a foundation to fight human trafficking and end modern day slavery. Hugh is the visionary founder of Education IT Service Provider Network Neighborhood, which grew to a large eight-figure business employing over 250 people. He travels globally, advising governments, businesses, churches, and other leaders. Here is Hugh Marquis. You know, so why don't we give it up for Jesus? Come on, come on. Why don't you stand and give it up for Jesus? That's what we're here for. We're here for Jesus. So can I get somebody on keys for it? A couple of minutes, please, if we can get that. Like, no, 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 keep going, keep going. Give it up for Jesus. We, we, we would, we're here for him. We're here for a relationship with him. Come on, if, if, if you've got a heavenly language, if you've got a heavenly language that you pray in tongues, can I ask you right now to start praying in tongues? Join me in praying in tongues. Come on. Come on, lift your voice to heaven right now. Come on. Father, Father, Father. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill this place right now. Fill this place. Touch every heart and every person in this place. Jesus, we love you. We honor you. We worship you. We welcome you in this place, Holy Spirit. We welcome you in this place. We have we say have your way in Port Harcourt. Have your way in your people, Lord Jesus. Have your way. Femi and Mina, thank you very much. Thank you for providing a banquet that we can all come and feast at. Thank you for creating the opportunity for us to be here with you. You've opened the doors for something special. And for 10 years, or your 11th year this year, You've created a place where the heavenlies, where God can come and inhabit the earth. We thank you for what you have done and what you are bringing. We thank you for the collaboration of people and the bringing together of the saints. To the team from TRS, as you've been serving the house over the last few days in the prayer room, in the healing room, the prophetic room. Thank you for your service and what you've done. I pray that there is an extra touch of God for you today. That God will come and rest upon each one of you as you've served and given words and seen great healings that we've spoken of for years and years and years. You can go ahead and take your seats, if you want, or you can stay standing in the presence of the Lord. Jane, you are the most amazing person to travel this world with. No, no. She, there is a gentleness about Jane that wherever she goes, she ushers in the Holy Spirit. She welcomes the Holy Spirit and travels with him. It's a joy traveling with her because doors open. Airport doors open. Upgrades happen, which is good. But Jane, you, what you carry and what you hold, I honor so much. Thank you for being you. 
thank you for serving so well. Catherine and Tom Ronala, thank you for inviting us to come on this trip as we juggled. But a little story of that. Catherine said we were going to come to Nigeria. We're going to go to Lagos. And then we're going to go to Poraco. I tried typing into Google what Poraco was or is. I, and Google didn't have an answer. So Jane and I came to Nigeria <laughs> without knowing where we were actually coming to. It's Port Harcourt, not Port Harcourt. <laughs> but that's okay. Because sometimes you go on a journey with God and you go out in faith. You take one more step and you take another step and God meets you in that journey. And I believe that both Jane and I have been marked on this trip. We've been marked by the genuine love that we've seen in this house. In a world that's hurting and in pain and suffering, to see the genuine love that Jesus talks to us about, to see it walked out, to see us caring for the widows and the orphans, for feeding the hungry. To looking after the social injustices of this world. The things that Christ asked us to do are so richly displayed in this house. So it's no wonder to me, it's no surprise to see the healings that have happened in the house, to see blind eyes open, to see ears pop open and the look of amazement as people can start to hear again, to see the lame get up and walk, to see the hungry fed. It's no surprise, but it is so exciting. It is so exciting to see that happen. This is the Bible in real, live action. The love of God. And over the last couple of days, God has been speaking to me about Nigeria, which is good because that's where we are. And I have a word that I feel is from the Lord. I feel the Lord saying, Nigeria, Nigeria, you're a precious jewel to me. And Nigeria, I am about to restore you. I am about to restore you to my original purpose. My God's desired purpose is about to recommend. And Nigeria, that that has put you in a box will be no more. For I am opening the lid of the box and I am taking the walls of the box down. No longer will you be constrained by the things that have constrained you. No longer will the religious constraints around the nation hold you back. No longer will you be put down. For you are a nation of great beauty. You will no longer know, be known as a nation of corruption, but you'll be a nation of purity and righteousness. You'll be a nation of freedom. For I am releasing a new wave, a wave of my glory, a wave of my glory that will reach every area of society. From the richest of the rich to the poorest of the poor, no one will be exempt from my glory in the time to come. It is a wave of righteousness and a wave of glory and a wave of change.
For Nigeria, I have, de- I have called you to be a discipling nation. A nation that will disciple other nations. Your neighbours, Cameroon, Chad, Niger, the other nations of Africa will learn from you. They will see your ways as your nation changes. They will not be envious, but they will inquire of what has happened. And the answer that will be given will be Jesus turned up. I see stadiums being filled right around the nation. Not with a false doctrine, but with a doctrine of love. A doctrine of love that will change people's lives. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you right now for the destiny you have, the purpose that you have for Nigeria. Father, I pray that love would flood every part of this great country, that there would be an outbreak of love across the nation, there would be an outbreak of love that changes people's lives. I pray for revival, Lord, but I pray for more than revival. I pray for a reformation and transformation that this nation would never be the same. I pray for transformation. And all the saints said, Amen. Amen. And thank you also to the sound guys and the tech. I had some slides that I prepared and they put up a computer and made sure that I had all of that stuff to work with, but I'm not going to use them because the Lord changed what I was going to do. I've got a folder on my laptop and it's called Unpreached Messages and all the ones that I sit and prepare and you'd spend hours seeking the Lord and writing them down and then he changes what you're doing and you put them in this folder. I ask the Lord, I, I, I say, Lord, what is it that you're doing? Why, why? I've spent hours on this. And he said, oh, you might use it one day, but it's good to get to know me like this. So here's the God of surprise and he will do different things and I love that. Can I share a couple of testimonies and stories from travels that Jane and I have had? A couple of years ago, we were in Ethiopia. And we are doing some crusade meetings in Ethiopia. But we went out into the streets beforehand, inviting people to come to the services. And in that city, there are people of an- another faith. There are Christians, and there are Catholics, and there are... But the interesting thing is the Orthodox Christians spat at us and threw stones at us and bottles and things. It it was an interesting experience as we walked around the street inviting them to these crusades. But we did the crusade and there was a, a community of people of another faith right next door and it was hard soil. And we set up and it was a a good African sound set up because there was big speakers and and we we came to a healing time and there was this, we we prayed for healing and a young girl who would be about that tall, so I don't know, somewhere between 10 and 14 I guess. But this young girl had an arm that stopped right here and it had a nub of a wrist on it so didn't the arm didn't go to the elbow and she came up to the front and a few of us stopped and laid hands on her and started praying for her arm and after we prayed she walked away The next night of the crusade and the numbers were growing, this young girl came back. But when she came back, she had an elbow and the arm, the wrist was past the elbow. The night before, she didn't have an elbow. 
And we're sort of looking going, wow. And we prayed again. But as we were praying, her mother came and was trying to drag her away back into the village. And she was screaming because she's going, no, I need Jesus. I need Jesus. We continued to pray for her. And then she went. The next night she came back at the revival, but her arm had grown out to halfway through. And she had a hand that she could now move her fingers and do fingers. It was phenomenal to watch. And as we prayed for her again, there was an altar call that night. And her mother gives her life to Jesus. And the community that were watching what were happening started coming to the revival. Then the next night, which was the last night, a whole, probably another three or 4,000 people arrived, but they'd been walking for six days to get from their outlying villages to come to what was happening. And so it all of a sudden got bigger and bigger and this young girl still made her way to the front. But by this stage, her arm was out to here. And she could move, her fingers had grown, and she could move. But there wasn't a wrist yet. When we asked people if they'd like to accept Jesus, their village, which had been coming, a whole village, give their life to Jesus. Come on, that's worthy of a yes and an amen. We don't know the end of that story. We don't know if her arm grew right out. But watching a limb grow day by day over four days was one of the most amazing experiences. Let's give glory to God for that. At, at the same time, meeting we prayed for deaf ears i'd never experienced anybody's ears opening up up until that stage i know heidi baker does it and i know randy clark does it and i know catherine royal nala sees it and i know tom jones sees it i hadn't seen it And we were praying for this guy that had been deaf for 10 years. He was older. And as we're praying, you see his eyes go. And they're huge. And he's looking. And he starts yelling. And he's grabbing us. And we're dancing and singing and singing and dancing and dancing and singing. Because he could hear for the first time in 10 years. I don't know who was more surprised, him or me, or Jane, or the, the, the team that were praying. We were jumping and dancing with him because it was so exciting to see. And he wanted to run off, but we gra grabbed him and came, grabbed him back. And we said, freely you've received, freely you give. There was a whole bunch of deaf people. And we said, you pray for them. And he's laying hands and bang, 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 bang. All of them were healed in the night. And you're watching as they're being healed. It's like, we're sitting there going, can you see what is happening, what God is doing? It's a God. That we love. He's a mysterious God. But wow, what he can do. I'm going to share one more testimony in a second, but I want just to read something out of the Bible. So I'm conscious that we've got the privilege of having Catherine up again soon, and wow, I am so looking forward to that. So out of John 15... Chapter 12. Sorry, John 15, verse 12. 
it says, this is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. And 13, it says, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down his life for his friends. You are my friend if you do what I command you. What did Jesus command us to do? He commanded us to love one another as he loved us. How did he love us? He laid his life down. Now, he says, it's an interesting verse because he says, you are my friends if I do what I command you. So how do you know? So if I said to Tom, Tom, if you love me, you'd walk up and hand me that piece of paper next to you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. No, it's okay. What do I know? I know that Tom loves me because he did what he was commanded. But that's what Jesus wants from us. He wants us to love as he loved, that we would lay our life down for others around us, that we would lay our life down. But you know what? It gets a whole lot better because as you keep reading, there's rewards. As you keep reading, it says, no longer will I call you slaves, for a slave does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard from my father, I will make known to you. I used to struggle reading the Bible, especially some of the genealogy in the Old Testament. You know, somebody begot somebody, so he begot somebody, and there's these names and things that I can't pronounce nor understand. So I would skip them. But then as I read this and learned that if I started to love as Jesus loved, then he would tell me everything that the Father told him. And as soon as you start loving people the way Jesus loves people, the Bible comes to life. That all of those words that I couldn't pronounce, because the Bible is the word of the Lord. Jesus says that if you love the way I love, the secrets of heaven, the secrets of what the Father told Jesus would be released to you. But it goes on. The Bible is so good. He said, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you that you would go and bear fruit and your fruit would remain so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he would give you. And this I command is that you love one another. There is great fruit. When you show the love of Jesus, there is great fruit. You've been in an absolute treat these last couple of days. A richness of heaven. But it's there for you to take outside of these walls. The fivefold ministry that I've been teaching here is to equip you to do the work of the ministry. It's so that you can go and show the love of Jesus outside these walls, in the streets. Port, Port Harcourt is only going to come to revival when God's people bring it out to the streets. It starts in you and goes outside. Are we good? God is so good. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There was another testimony that I want to share with you. Just quickly before I do, let me read to you from Matthew 6. You might not all know this verse. Because the disciples asked Jesus how to pray.
And Jesus told them in Matthew 6, and you could repeat it with me because you know, you will all know it. It says, Our Father, why don't you join me, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your, earth be do- your will be done, sorry, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. What does it say next? So, I believe those last little bit there, for yours is the kingdom, the power and glory forever and ever, was not actually in the original text. It was added in 317 AD by Constantinople. He put that in there. But I believe the addition of those words, because we say, and yours is the kingdom forever and ever, amen, and you close the Bible. Well, I do. I did. Does anybody know what the next two verses say? I'll read them to you. It says, For if you forgive others their transgressions, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive you. And I think it's one of those secrets of Christendom that we overlook. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth that is in heaven. Give us this daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us for evil. And if I forgive others, you will forgive me. It doesn't take away from what Jesus did at the cross. But Jesus is teaching us to pray that we need to live in that place of forgiveness. We need to live in that place of unconditional forgiveness. Be very quick to forgive others because that's what Jesus asks of us. We can choose that. And when we forgive, there is healing. When we forgive others for what they've done to us, when we forgive ourselves for what we've done, Is there anybody beside me that has felt guilty over some of the things that they've done in their life? You've got to learn to forgive yourself. Because when you're forgiven and truly forgiven, you can tell your story and it's your story that's going to set other people free. Forgiveness. You know... One of the things that leads to forgiveness is an apology. But I don't think we know how to apologise the right way. Just simply saying I'm sorry is not enough. An apology requires a change in behaviour, like repentance. And I believe the Bible says this is the right way to apologise. You can check it out. It says, first of all, Admit what you did. I did this. If you've done something wrong that you need to apologise for, I did this. And then say, I was wrong. Now, men, I understand that that can be difficult, but I want you to do that with me in a second. Okay, one count to three. We're going to go, I was wrong. (coughs) 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 Wrong. Come on, men, on the count of three. One, two, three. I was... Sort of. What about you, ladies? Because they were going to apologise. So, ladies, on the count of three. One, two, three. I was wrong. Say what you did. Admit you were wrong. Then you say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And you ask for forgiveness. (coughs) Would you forgive me? If you go back to this Bible verse, it said, as much as you forgive, God will forgive you. (coughs) 
Thank you, Joseph. Appreciate that. Thank you. That's Nigerian frogs in my throat. We didn't have them at breakfast. We had gizzards. We had... No, it doesn't matter. You ask for forgiveness and then you give people permission to hold you accountable for your, that you've changed your behaviour. Why am I saying that? God is really into relationships and he wants to see relationships healed. Let me just share quickly. In January, at a conference we were holding in Melbourne, Adelaide, we were somewhere, <laughs> no we were in Adelaide, it was an amazing conference, the Lord said in August last year, I want you to put, hire the conference centre and put a conference on and call it Live to Love, he said it would be a unity of bringing churches together, it'll be breaking down the barriers, it'll be inviting people from all denominations, exactly what our friends have done here and done for 10 years, I should have known you 10 years ago and I could have picked up all of your ideas we're leaking. Nope, I did put the lid on. I could have learnt so much and not had to try and figure some of this out ourselves. So I'm going to pick your brains for our next one, all right? Is, is, is that okay? Because you've done an amazing job of what we were asked to do. But our friend Will Hart was speaking. He spoke out of micro, micro and he said... And the, far, the heart of the fathers returned to the sons, and the sons returned to the father. But there was a young man at the conference. He'd flown in from Melbourne. And this young man had never met his dad. Had never met his dad. His mum had got pregnant, um, unmarried, and the dad had gone. Had never met his dad. And he, there, we have websites called Ancestry.com where you can try and find your lineage and, and what have you. And he'd searched through that and gone up some pretty dry gullies. So he was a bit disappointed. But as Will said that, this young man's phone, and a message comes in from an unknown number. And the unknown number said, Hi, my name is... I believe I may be your father. And if you're open to it, I would like to meet and see if we could meet. Now, normally that's a pretty strange sort of thing. The younger man says, how do you know that you might be my father? And he said, well, I've been on Ancestry.com and I've traced through some things there and it just seems like it. He said, I'm, I'm not sure, but I did know your mother. And, <clears throat> and uh, the young man said, oh, well, where do you live? And he's, the older man said, I live in Brisbane. The young man said, oh, I live in Melbourne. He said, can I call you after this weekend? I'm at a conference in Adelaide. And the man from Brisbane says, oh, that's funny. I'm at a conference in Adelaide. They were both at the same conference. Hmm? At our conference, at the Live to Love conference, they're both there, they go and meet out in the marketplace hall. Because God's into restoring relationships. He's into healing relationships. But it gets funnier. Because the next weekend we were visiting with Tom and Catherine at their church and we're telling this testimony and a guy in the audience stands up and says, absolute truth, that's me, I'm the dad. <laughs> and you go, how do you do this, God? Because he knows. And I know there's going to be some more healing. There's going to be a lot more things to happen. And in a second, I actually want to pray over restored, restoring relationships. But very quickly, just before I do that, Joseph, could you just come? Lift your hands. 
So Joseph, I heard the Lord say about you that the seed must first die before it can produce fruit. I felt that your time in the wilderness, that you were lost and by your own admission, you didn't know what to do. That was the dying of the seed. And the Lord has called you into a place such as this. And he's calling you to time such as this. And the Lord says, I am raising up a voice of righteousness within you, that you will have influence over everybody you speak to. They will look at you as a branch of righteousness and they'll see the change in your world because they want the change in your world. And I see, I feel the Lord saying, there is a time coming upon you very quickly that you'll be called into the highest echelon of government in this nation. And you'll be called upon for your wisdom because you'll be able to give wisdom and a purity from heaven. The Lord says he is creating a voice inside you because it's been, it's been a dream for you for years. You said, I want to speak for the nation. I want to speak for the nation. And I feel the Lord saying, now is your time that the seed that has been planted is about to bear fruit. So Joseph, I bless you. I bless you. In Jesus' name. So, the Lord is very much into restoring relationships. A couple of months back, he asked me, he woke me at three o'clock in the morning. I don't like being woken at three o'clock in the morning. I like sleeping, but God likes to wake me because he has a conversation. And he had this, he said, why did I send my son? I'm like, it's three o'clock in the morning, can't we do this later? He said, why did I send my son? I said, is this a trick question, God? I said, no, no, why did I send my son? I said, you sent your son to take our sins, to die on the cross. He said, yeah, but why? I said, well, I just answered that. Yeah, but why? And I said, God, you're not three years old. You know, three-year-olds do that. Why? I, and I said, well, you sent your son to die on the cross. Take us in. Yeah, but why? I thought I've answered that. He goes, yeah, but why? I'm going, there must be more to this conversation. Because sometimes I go to the remedial classes of God. It takes a bit of time for him to get through to me. And I thought about it and I said, will you send him? so that we can be in right relationship with you. He said, yeah. He said, I sent my son Jesus as a man, fully man, to die, to take our sin, to forgive us, so that we can be in right relationship, that we could be back in that place of relationship with the Father. And I feel that the Lord wants to restore some relationships. I feel that... Could I just get someone to play something? I, I would try and play, but it won't work. Um, the Lord says that there are some hurts and there's some feelings. That hurts and... There's been feelings that have been hurt. There's been betrayal. And I know this is delicate. But he wants to bring restoration. And he wants to bring healing to those relationships. So if that's you, if you feel that you've been hurt and been betrayed and need healing in areas of relationship, could I ask you to just quickly jump out of your seat we don't have much time. Quickly come, jump out of your seat and come to the front. Because God's doing something now. He heals in the most magnificent ways. He heals blood pressure. He heals sight. He heals broken arms. But I feel he's also wanting to heal broken hearts. So if that's you right now, the ministry team up here, just come, just come quickly 
so we can pray and that God will do a healing in your world. Father, I just pray over every wounded heart, over every wounded person here, Lord God. I pray for your presence. I pray healing upon them in Jesus' name. I pray restoration of relationships in Jesus' name. And Father, show them your love. For each person here, show them, Lord, how you feel about them. Give them fresh eyes to see how you see them, Lord God. You see them as pure and as holy, cherished, loved. That you love them that much, Lord, that you sent your only son. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the healing that's taking place. We thank you for tears of restoration right now. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. Call la la la. She can bamba he di 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 he give me. Oh, she can la la he. Healing, 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 healing. Restoration right now. Restoration right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would give a Holy Spirit hug. A Holy Spirit hug. A Holy Spirit hug, Lord. There would be healing and restoration at this altar today, Lord Jesus. Lives would be changed. For you so loved the world, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, more, more, more. You know, the greatest relationship we can have is a relationship with Jesus. He loves you so much. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for all you are doing. And Lord, we just say, would you help us to love the way that you love, that we would lay our life down for others. Lord, that we would be your arms and feet in the community. Lord, that you would use us to be the miracle that someone else is praying for. You would use us to be the miracle that would change people's lives. Father, we thank you for all you are doing. All you are doing. In Jesus' name. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Do you want the water? You can read my notes another time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need this?
Spirit lays me on the power of your love. Hold me close. Let your love surround me. Bring me near, draw me to your side, and as I wait, arise up like the I will soar with you. Your spirit leads me on by the power of your love.